Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. He's saying that we are with him. He's calling us to partner with him. He does not need me to come from Brazil and tell you a story and, and be here. He does not need Pastor Jeff to have a vision from this place, for that place. He wants us, but he wants us to partner with him. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tommy. Thanks for joining us today at the church at Bushland. Man, we pray that your faith will be encouraged and inspired from today's message. Is that, is that anybody's testimony in the room today? Has this goodness followed you? Has it changed you? Well, I want to say to you, Psalm 40 says it this way. He's put a, what, a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise unto the Lord. Why? So that when you sing your song, when you declare his praises, watch, others will what? Fear and see and put their trust in you in the Lord too. Did you know that your breakthrough is somebody else's breakthrough? That your testimony will lead to somebody else's testimony? So what does that lead us to do? We got to sing a song. We got to lift a hymn of praise. We got to fulfill what? The Great Commission. I want you to know God's given us this opportunity over at Mesa Verde this morning. I'm going to read the Great Commission. You're going to see some of the nations come in by these flags. And then I want you to let God begin to move your heart with His. Here's what Jesus says. Therefore, go, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Before you, you see Israel, United States, Brazil, Somalia, Mexico, Republic of Congo, Burma, Afghanistan. These are the nations that God has brought to the north side of Amarillo. These are the nations that represent the kids that are in Mesa Verde. And this is God's design that what? We would sing a song and others would see and fear and put their trust in Him. And then here's the result of those prayers in that song. In Revelation it says, After this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation. Somebody say every nation. Tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing what? White robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Does anybody believe there are going to be some new salvations from the nations because we're willing to sing our song? We're willing to go and testify because that's just how good God is. See, before you is the kingdom of heaven. Here's what we share with everyone in the world. We're all made in the image of God. And Jesus laid his life down for what? For all. Listen to me. He's patient, not wanting any to suffer. I know sometimes we see an enemy, but you know what God says? He says, that's my future son and that's my future daughter. And he's called us to go. He's called us to go. So I want you just to extend your hand just as a representation. I'm gonna let God move my heart for the nations. Right here, will you begin to intercede for these nations. And I want to pray. Philippians 2 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. God, we know that at the trumpet blast, Jesus, you're coming to get your kids, and we know that's a prophecy of that day. But we know that you are currently patient, not wanting any to suffer. And God, you've given us the keys. God, to a location on the north side of town where there are four over 400 kids from the nations. God, that we simply get to go love you and love them so that with their own lips, God, they can confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God, your desire is for the nations to come together to magnify your name, and we're going to do that together. So God, thank you that you your goodness pursued us you put a new song in our mouth and we're going to sing of your goodness and testify of your faithfulness knowing, God, that you're still changing hearts and you're still doing miracles through salvation and you're changing generations and nations. And we're just thankful we get to part, be a part of it. We love you and bless you and we celebrate you. And everybody said, amen. Can we celebrate just God's design for the nations? Come on. This is our Lord. You can be seated. Man, I'm, I'm so thankful. We welcome our online audience. Today, you're going to get an opportunity to hear from Tiago, a good friend of mine we just brought on staff here in a moment. But I want to give you an invitation 
Some of you have been a part of our mission team, blessing the teachers. We're gonna continue to do that. Tiago's gonna share his testimony, but I want everybody to listen. Right after this service, we got some Young Bloods catered lunch for you, all right? If you, if there's something in your heart that just says, I know I am to make an impact in the nations right here on the north side of town, we wanna invite you to that lunch. There's pizza for your kids. Tiago's gonna share in more detail how every one of us can play a part all right, whether it's in the after-school program, some of our outreaches, just to pray, however it is. How many of you know God's just looking for a yes? Come on, is that all he's looking for? So will you take a step of faith with us and come join us for that lunch? I hope it's standing room only over there as we get to just continue to take a step. Tiago, you come. Will you welcome my friend Tiago? Um, He's gonna come. He'll share his story. You're gonna be blessed by this. This is a man of God. He'll introduce his wife, Nina, and their, their kids here in just a moment. But God brought Tiago and I together five years ago. We took a mission team from this church. Many of you prayed for our mission team that went. You supported, you sponsored. And for two weeks, we got to see God do some miraculous things. And man, just uh, changed our hearts. And one of the blessings that came out of that is Tiago was one of my interpreters. And we got to just minister together the kingdom of heaven. I didn't know Tiago. Tiago didn't know me. But you know what brought us together? We knew Jesus Christ. And that's what qualified us in that moment in the Holy Spirit to do his work and do his ministry. And I thought I was saying goodbye to Tiago five years ago. Little did I know, how many of you know that Jehovah Sneaky up there was going, oh, if you only knew, all right? If you, oh, come on, you know it's in there. It's somewhere, all right? It's in there. But God was doing some more. And the more you're gonna get to hear today as God continued to stir. And this, all, all I wanna say to you about Tiago and his wife Nina and their family, This is a man and woman that love God and they love people and they respond in faith. And my faith is inspired through you. And I'm so thankful that we get these days to serve together. Can you welcome Tiago as he comes and just shares? Love you, bro. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Um, My name is Tiago. I'm Married to Nina. I'd like Nina to stand up. I want to honor my wife and my kids that have been walking with me in this journey. And I would like to honor Tommy and Lana, which is watching us online. And uh, it's a blessing to meet, to meet you and to be here. It's a privilege. It's an honor for us to be here. And I want to Also say thank you, Pastor Jeff, for trusting God and and trusting me here. So today I would like you to open your Bible in John chapter 4, verses verses 34 and 38. This is my third time preaching English. The second one was the service before this one. So (laughs) be here with me. Um, John chapter 4, 34, 38 says, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have, don't you have a saying, is it still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. And the message that God has put in my heart today is, is called, is titled, Look at the Fields. Because when we see Jesus here talking to his disciples, he, he just finished a conversation with this a Samaritan woman. And they come and they probably recognize that Jesus was, Jesus was having... Um, hard walking and, and being for a long time without eating. And they are like, oh, Jesus, 
why don't you stop for a little bit and eat something? And what he responds, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and finish his work. He's saying that his food is to eat, is to do what the Father is saying him to do. And that should be our food today, our spiritual food. Is to do what God is asking us to do. Is to do what only God is telling us to do. And I would say that we have some requirements for a harvest. Because they, the disciples are, are coming and they are, they are kind of trying to stop Jesus of doing what he's doing. But he said, I don't have time to eat. I want to do what my father wants me to do. Don't you see? Look at the fields. Open your eyes and look at the fields. So we have some requirements for a harvest here. Jesus is asking them to open their hearts to see what is about to come. They are waiting four months. But Jesus is saying they are ripe for the harvest. The harvest is ready. Open your eyes. That's That's we can, I, I can say there are two requirements, spiritual and physical requirements. Spiritual, it takes faith to see what God is seeing ahead. It will take faith for us, from us sometime to do something that God is asking us to do that we cannot see what is coming. It takes four months and he says, they are ripe for harvest. Jesus said, open your eyes and look at the field. And he's saying this to us today. Because if we translate Mesa Verde, which is in Spanish, it could be in Portuguese as well. Mesa Verde. But it's in Spanish, Mesa Verde. If you translate to English, it will be green fields. Have you thought about that? Green field. So God is telling us today, look to the green field. Look to the Mesa Verge. Look to that region. Look and see. They are ripe for harvest. And Jesus is telling more. Because he says, even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. He's saying that. We are with him. He's calling us to partner with him. He does not need me to come from Brazil and tell you a story and, and be here. He does not need Pastor Jeff to have a vision from this place, for that place. He wants us, but he wants us to partner with him. He wants us to have our hearts available He wants us to be open it for the things that he wants to do. And guess what? He is telling us that we are bearing fruits for eternity. The fruits that we are right now giving here or, or having here or that we will have in a couple months, those fruits are for eternity. And he says that we must bear fruit. So if we look to John 15, we're going to say Jesus talking about the vine and he says that he is the vine and who want, the ones that are connected with the vine, they shall bear fruit. And he's talking about us, to a bearing fruit for eternal life. And he is the reward. In the end, he will be the reward. So we will rejoice together with him. The word says, the sower and the reaper, they will be glad together. Isn't that amazing that I can be glad with God, that I'm partnering with God, that I'm being invited by God to do this, this, this ministry here? And, it, and the physical requirements are we must be available. We must set up a schedule. We're going to talk about the schedule in a couple minutes during the lunch. 
And maybe you say, well, but uh, I didn't work with child, with children before. But I guarantee you, if you have a heart that is available, God is going to use you. God is going to use you to bless that community. Be available. Because sometimes we want the harvest, but we don't want the work of the harvest. You see? And probably some of you guys here work around here and have some farms or work on a farm. And then you will see it's hard to work there, especially during this winter. And it looks like the winter is inside me right now. <laughs> and, uh, but I thank Jesus for that. Because he's bringing us. He's making us ready. He's saying, be ready. Take action is another one. We must take action. We cannot just listen and ignore what God is saying. Uh, okay, God. Okay, Holy Spirit. No, we must take action. We must put our hands to work. But before that, Something that is both spiritual and physical. Jesus was telling them, open your eyes and look at the fields. Open your eyes. That's both spiritual and physical. And that's part of our journey in the last um, five, maybe five years. Because when I met Tommy, 2019, I was in a season of waiting and trying to make... Uh, things with my own strength, with my own hands. 2015, we heard, me and Nina, 2015, 2016, we got a bunch of words and, and people saying, and, and the scripture, God was talking to us saying, I'll make this your nation. And I said, okay, God, but how? How's that possible? It would take a bunch of money for us to come to the United States. I was there in Brazil. I worked at Uh, as an engineer, I was a professor at the University of Amazon, giving classes for, the, the, for eight years in that area. Working for good companies. We had our apartment, car, a quiet life, good life. Doing uh, ministry part-time, being a pastor, a youth pastor in Brazil for seven years. Then later being a young adult pastor for two years. Before we came here. And God was telling us. I'll make that your nation. And I, okay. So let I work. I work hard. Then I start working. Getting out home. 6.30. Going giving classes. And making business. And coming back home. 11 p.m. So when I went home. My son was sleeping. When I came back home. My son was sleeping again. My wife was tired. And I could not talk. I was tired too. I had to sleep to get the other day done again. And trying to do that. And try to do as much as we were trying. Less we have. Then God came and said. You're trying to do with your own hands. And that's not going to happen. When you trust me. I will show you the way. And then I surrender to God. I give up my, um, my job of being the engineering department coordinator. Because that was taking me a lot of time. And uh, I said to them, I will just be a professor again. And, and that decreased my salary like three times. But uh, I was trusting God. I knew that I was listening to God. And suddenly someone calls Nina and said, Hey Nina, does your husband speak English? And I said, well, he tries. <laughs> <laughs> and then that lady said, Because um, we're going to receive a team of missionaries here from America, 19 missionaries, and we need one translator for each person. Like, Do you think he can help? And uh, I was like, kind of, disappointed, you know, but I said, okay, because a week before, I had a deny to study in, in um, Hagai Institute in Hawaii, and uh, I, I, I said, okay, God, I thought Hawaii was in the United States, and everything would 
star, you know? And it, it really is. But uh was not what God had for me at the time. And, and uh, I then started serving at that conference. And we had trainings in the morning. And we went to spread the gospel and pray for people uh, on the neighborhoods in the evenings. And that evening, in the first day of the conference, we were praying for a church of about 700 people and praying for healing. And a lot of missionaries, a lot of uh, people from here. Uh, John was there. Uh, his daughter, Kayleen, was there. Tommy was there. Lana was there. And, and, uh, but I didn't know them. And after we praying for the people and seeing a bunch of people healed, that comfort marked my life because marked our city actually because more than 10,000 people were healed in two weeks that those people were there praying and, and, and going, you know. And uh, in the first night after praying for people, Tommy and I, I was translating him. That man was deaf in one of his ears and he started listening again as soon as we prayed for him. But the thing is, when we finished praying, Tom said, Tiago, can I pray for you? And I said, yes, sure. He prayed for me. After he prayed, he said, Tiago, I feel the Holy Spirit is telling me that you have a call. And your call is not only for Brazil. It's not only for your local church. But it's a calling for the nations. And I feel the Lord is saying me that your call is going to start by studying. And uh, don't worry about your finances. And because God is going to provide the sponsors. Just be ready. You're going to see the opportunity coming. And I said, okay. I took note. And I put that in my heart. Because I was a professor. And I was thinking, oh, yeah. He said about studying. So I'm going to study my doctorate in California. You know. <laughs> it's telling uh, studying, so I'm gonna study in, in Michigan, somewhere, Florida. That's close weather uh, with Brazil, so maybe I don't know. And then I start like thinking about it. In the other day, in a different church, I didn't know Lana, and I didn't know she was Tommy's la uh, wife, but she she prayed for me as well, and she gave me a powerful prophetic word that was so deep that everything that she said was fulfilled in the next couple days or weeks ahead, uh, 2019 at that time. And uh, I was like, okay, Lord, if that's what you have for me, I want to get into that. I surrender. I give you everything. And uh, I don't know how is that possible. And where do you want me? So it passes July, August, September. Uh, October, November, December, January, February 2020. I went to Sao Paulo to a conference. And there I go in a stadium, um, 140,000 people. Uh, at that time in Brazil, it was a big conference of revival and praying for missionaries to be sent to the nations. And I was there and I Somewhere, someone just texted me through my Instagram post and said, Hey, Tiago, I'm glad you're there. I said, Okay. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could be there, but I, I'm in the United States. And uh, I'm happy that you're there. I said, Thank you. Uh, what? And, and that lady was my student in 2014. I didn't follow her, but she was following me, and she said that message, and she said, Tiago, you know what? Three days ago, the Lord gave me a dream and said to me to pray for a man called Tiago, that he wants to bring this man to the United States, and uh, I don't know if that makes any sense for you, but I feel the Lord is saying that he wants to bring you to a place here in Dallas, Texas. The fact is... I will come back. I will back a little bit. After the conference, in the end of the conference, in the last day, we had time like to meet each other. 
and talk and say, hey, where are you from? Well, I'm from Texas. So Kylie came to me. Kylie was here, uh, and now she's in Fort Worth studying. She's James, uh, she's James' daughter, and she said, Tiago, I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is asking me to give you something. It's not a big thing. It's just a simple gift. It's not even from my city yet. But uh, I want you to receive. I said, okay. I opened my hands. And she put a flag of Texas written Dallas on it. And I said, Texas? Okay. <laughs> Dallas? What in Dallas? You know, I didn't know any place around this area. And uh, so when, when that lady texted me and she said, you know what? The Holy Spirit's telling me that he wants to bring you to Dallas, Texas. I said, no way. I started crying. I started crying immediately because I felt was the Holy Spirit confirming that. And, but I, she said, I said, what are you doing that? She said, my husband is studying at Christ for the Nations. And I said, oh, okay. I don't know about that, but it's okay. So I ran the other to the other side of the stadium with my french fries and lunch and everything and tears falling apart and i got to my wife and i said you know what someone told her that god wants us to go to the united states to dallas texas to study at christ for the nations and she started crying because ah! <laughs> i didn't know christ for the nations at the time but she knew she knew that some brazilian people had studied that before and um, so we started, we, we, came, we, go, we went back to our city, which is Belém, top north of Brazil. And, um, and then COVID came. So COVID came, shut down everything, locked down everywhere. And I were, I was, we were stuck in our apartment for like maybe 30 days. I don't know, 60 days. And uh, I was the one that was going just get food. And you guys remember how tough was that. And, but I was one day praying in my apartment. I said, God, so the embassy is closed right now. The borders are closed. The United States is closed. And I'm applying for a school in Dallas, Texas. How's that going to happen? Are you going to make a way? Is this now? It should be next year on the other year. And God spoke to my heart and he said, Tiago, remember the day that you surrendered your life to me? And you said, the day that I call you, you're going to sell everything and go follow me. And that promise was 10 years before. So be careful what you're saying today to God. <laughs> and uh, he reminded me that I said, yes, Lord. And he says, that's the time. Now's the time. Sell everything you have. So I sold my apartment. We sold our car. I sold my books. And if you, if you are a teacher, you know how, how uh, books represent to us. And uh, we sold everything, guys. And then we, my family could not understand anything. Like at the time. And people were like, you guys, my goodness. You're a man of faith, but let me tell you, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, I said, yeah, but I'm following what God is telling me. And I'm sure he's going to make a way. So we rent an apartment for six months. And I told my wife, we're going to go. If God is saying, he will make a way. And months passing, passing, months passing, months passing. And month after month, the deadline to come to Sif and I was getting short. In November... They sent me my I-20, which is the document that allowed me to go to the embassy, which is too close. And we got four denials from them. By the phone, by email, <laughs> in person. <laughs> we tried everything we could. And they said, no, the embassy is closed. The border is closed for Brazil. You cannot get into the United States. And I was inside, but God told me to go. <laughs> you know? And then I found a man. And he said, Tiago, um, we can get your visa in Ecuador. So how's that possible? I don't know. So, but he's saying, okay. And uh, 
Okay, so he, we, we started all the process again because we started in Brazil. We spent that money there, and then we had to spend the money again to do another process in Ecuador. And uh, when I talked to that man, I looked to my wife, and I said, today's Tuesday, so our flight is Saturday. I bought the tickets. She said, what? I said, I, I got to say, it's now. We must go. And she said, okay. So we started saying, bye, mama. <laughs> bye, daddy. They probably are watching us now. And uh, I said, bye. And bye, friends. Bye, church. And we flee from um, Belém to Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo to Bogotá, Colombia, Colombia to Guayaquil, Ecuador. And then we got in Ecuador. And as soon as we got there, uh, the guy that was guiding us in the process said, Tiago, I don't have good news. The embassy here is closed too. They, they, they were receiving a lot of people from all around the world. And, and it's closed. I said, man, what am I going to do? We are here spending dollars. We were in an Airbnb. And he said, but if you come to Chile, I can get you there. And then I start putting my engineering mind to some spreadsheets and putting the cost of everything, plan A, plan B, plan C. The Holy Spirit came and said, don't you understand? It's not about your plan. It's about my plan in your life. So go pray. And I just left the computer. I look at the window where we were. There was a mountain right uh, behind the building, right behind the Airbnb. And uh, I told my wife, I'm going to go to this mountaintop and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. Uh, I will just come back when I get an answer from God. You know? Because I reminded Psalms 121 verse 1 and 2 that says, Look up to the mountains where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And he, he told me to come here with my family, with my wife and my son. He's going to make a way. Then I went to that mountaintop and I was not that guy, that type of guy that goes to prayer mountain and pray. <laughs> that was my first time. And I went there, three hours praying. After that, God spoke to me. Go down to your apartment. Your answer is there. I said, okay, God, I know it's my family. They are my comfort, you know. But uh, I need to know, am I be here or go to Chile? Chile? Holy Spirit? <laughs> no. He said, go to your apartment. Your answer is there. And I, I, fight. I fought for three times. After the third time, he said, go down to your apartment. Your answer is there. I said, okay, I'll go. I went home. I took a shower, kind of disappointed, sad, talking to Nina. And then I got my phone, and there was a message from the guy that was helping us. And he said, Tiago, I have that message here. I got an appointment for you in two days. I don't know how. Someone gave up, and the, and the, the, the slot was open, so I put you there. I said, okay, thank you. I don't know what you believe in, but that's just a miracle. Because I finished praying. And God is, is using you to say that. So we got to the embassy. It's a long story, but I'll make it short because of the time. But we went to the embassy. We got our visas. And we finished our quarantine in Ecuador, 14 days. We got 18 days there. And then we went to Dallas to CFNI. And, and, uh, and that was a part of the testimony and I'm just telling you this to say that God is still speaking through this through his word through dreams prophetic words Holy Spirit is is talking to us look at the fields look at the green field look at Mesa Verge the Lord is telling us a bunch of things and I had this season at CFNI. Tommy was there visiting us one day. And he was hearing all these stories. And uh, he invited me to come here and, and talk to the youth and 
have a moment with them to share. That was my first time preaching English. The second, the first service was the second one, and now the third one, you see? The church at Bushland. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, a season at Sif and I was really good. I could be soaked in God's presence. I could be with Him and feel Him and talk to Him every day. The time that I didn't have before. But the same time was a training. Was a preparation. We had hard days. We had days that we had no food at home. We used it to get donations, food donations. Because if you don't know, an international student cannot work in the U.S. We're not allowed to work. And the, the thing is, we were... Getting donations at that time was right after Christmas. I don't remember. All the donation places were closed. So we ran out food. My wife looked at me and said, what are we going to eat? And I said, God's going to provide. I caught that and uh, I went to my son's room. I got his little coin park and I, break, I broke it. I got all the coins. I went to a dollar three. I got something to eat that day, and we ate that. And the other morning, she looked at me again. What are we gonna eat? And I said, God is gonna provide. And that day, when I just finished, like moments later, we were seated at the, the kitchen, like talking. I was close, like to this flag, to the door, and someone knocked at my door. And I said, okay, let me open with this. I opened the door and nobody was there. But at CFNI's balcony, it's wood. So you can, I could hear the steps of someone walking and going. And I look at this way, this way, nobody. But on my door was a bunch of groceries. Like all kind of food, everything we need. Yogurt for the kids, you know, like things that God knows. We like. That was a supernatural experience. But we had natural experiences as well. Like one day I needed to pay my school bill. And I had no money to pay. And because we came. Let me say that. We came with money for one year. And in six months the money was gone. You know. So the Brazilian currency after COVID got six per one. So one dollar, you could buy six reais, which is like, it's bad for us. And so my money was gone. And uh, I was thinking, okay, Lord, how am I paying this school? And then someone in the prayer group in the church listened to me that I was asking prayer for my school bill. And this man went to CFNI and I paid $7,000 in my school bill. So he paid for my whole semester. And uh, I saw miracles. I saw supernatural. I saw natural things. And uh, I was serving. I'm just finishing here. But I, last year I was like connected with God. And God gave me that dream. And in the dream he showed me that like a building. And he showed me the surroundings of the building. And when I woke up, he told me, what do you think that it's good for kids to be raised in the right way, in a Christian way, different from the places you grew up, Tiago? So I started drawing everything. I put that in a, in a paper and uh, I started praying on that. And one of my mission teachers at Sif and I, he told me, Tiago, you must remember that. You must see that what God is doing in your life. He's saying to you, Habakkuk 2, 1 and 3. Stand in your watch. And look to see what he will say. And what answer am I, I am giving, uh, I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, 
write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time and it speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. So I had that dream. I had that words. I had everything together. I had the plans. I had the writings. I had the paper. And, but uh, I didn't know how that would happen. Then I called Tommy because the Lord spoke to me and said, Tiago, you must get advices from people that have experience in life. People that are older than you. I started talking to some of my teachers at CFNI. and I. And I called Tommy. I told him that story and everything. And I showed him the drawing. He said, Tiago, um, let's pray about it. Because our church just received a building here in Amarillo to do something that Pastor Jeff has in his heart. God put it in his heart. And we've been praying since April last year. In October, Tommy called me and said, Tiago, we have an answer. You can come. And, and God just started popping more things in my mind, you know. But if you could stand up, I'm finishing. And I want to pray for you. But we must understand this. In the end of this, it's not about me. It's not about Pastor Jeff's vision. It's not about Tommy. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about Him. It's about Jesus. It's about His glory. He is the one who has all the glory. The glory belongs to the Lord. And all the nations will come and surrender to Him. Because that's what Psalms 86, 9 says. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring, bring glory to your name. So all those nations that we are seeing here, four of them, actually five, Myanmar, Congo, Afghanistan, Somalia, and, and Mexico. Those nations, they are in the 1040 window. They are countries where Christians are persecuted. Their houses are burned. Their families are murdered. And they are coming to Amarillo. They are coming here and even those that are not Christians, as soon as they start receiving the love and knowing the love of the Father, because they don't have a Father. We have a Father and we know our Father. As soon as they get to know that, they will respond. They will say yes to Jesus. They will say yes to the gospel. And Matthew 9, 37, 38 says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers in His harvest field. He is the one who is sending us. God is the one who is giving Mesa Verge to us. And we're going to be there. We're going to do the ministry. We're going to not impact only the kids, but the parents, the families. They will be transformed. That place, the dry bones will rise again. They will be transformed. Hallelujah. And there's an invitation for you and I finish here. It's in 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. You're being called today to spread the light of Jesus over that places, over all the nations, all the places here in Amarillo and Bushland, they will be in God's hand. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for your presence, Holy Spirit. For your presence, Father. You are the one we desire. We, that, we are the one that we are going after. You only, Jesus. You are the way. You are the truth. Let us, let us say this truth to this city. Let us proclaim your word in Mesa Virgin, that project with that kids, Lord. 
Lord, we bless your name. And we bring the nations to you, Lord. Because your word says, they will worship you. And we are going to bear fruit for eternal life. Please, Holy Spirit, open our eyes today. Open our eyes. And let us look at the field. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you need prayer, if you want. Hey, thanks for joining us today here at the Church at Bushland Online. Hey, if you were inspired by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. Just drop a message in the comments or you could email us at info at the church at bushland.com. We'd love to hear what God's doing in your life. Also, man, if there's anything we could agree for in prayer with you guys, just text the word pray to 806-557-1800. We believe there's power in agreement um, with the Lord. And so um, if we could pray for you, just do that for us. Um, and if you'd like to connect further with us through social media, uh, just search the church at Bushland. You can find out more things that are coming up here um, and get involved that way. And then if you'd like to plan a visit, uh, we'd love to see you face to face. We have services here, 9 a.m., 1030 a.m. every Sunday. You can go to our website, the church at and plan that visit. And we look forward to meeting you that way. Finally, man, just thanks again for joining us. Pray your faith was encouraged and we look forward to journeying with you in the days ahead. So have a blessed day.